Hey, how's it going? And today I'm excited to bring you this tutorial about how to texturize a large scale surface with lines, text, or other geometric formations or whatever really you want, such that if you wanted to build, let's say like a basketball court or a runway or some kind of marked off large scale open space with lines or all different kinds of things really it's hard to describe really well that you could do with it it's really large scale lines texturing on a surface so if i hit play i'll show you kind of what i'm talking about now this is just the first person template there's no starter content in here and so this is kind of what i'm talking about if you wanted to create a large plane surface like this with lines like this straight lines like this and then marked off areas like this like a basketball court and then you wanted to put images or text on the ground something like that now you'll notice on this one there is um, a little bit of aliasing going on on the curves but honestly not too bad there's nothing wrong with at all with the straight lines the straight lines are perfect it's just wherever there's curves there is some aliasing there is some noticeable aliasing but i don't honestly think too many people are going to care about that it's not that bad. The more you scale this down or the higher resolution your image is, the less that would be noticeable. So you can adjust all that. So one of the things that comes up with this kind of idea or project is what kind of image should you use? And fortunately, there's already information on the internet about that. And if you come to this one website, informit.com, there's this book called Unreal engine 4 for design visualization it does a nice job of explaining all the supported file types and they all have their pros and cons here he says something really important about png because i actually like png a lot are mostly used for ui elements and that tga files are the game industry standard so of all the formats you'll have to just test it yourself and see what you like but i ended up going with a compressed tga file and I use an older version of Photoshop to do that. It's a good format to use, and like he says, it is sort of the game industry standard for 8-bit images. So if you come in here to Photoshop, I just created a 20 by 48. That's another thing they mentioned to keep in mind, is that as far as your resolution, they should be scaled to powers of 2, 64, 128. I went with 2048. But I might go, if I notice too much aliasing, I might go up one, one scale higher. There's that to keep in mind when you're deciding what image format to go with. But like I said, I just ended up throwing this together in Photoshop, which is 2048 by 2048. And I saved it at 24 bits. And then I also compressed it, which made a huge difference as if I just not compressed it, the file would have been much, much bigger, like 50 times bigger or something like that. So anyway, that's what I ended up going with. So I'll kind of walk you through something because the one thing is once you get the, I'm going to go ahead and delete this material right here. And so once you've created your material and you've decided on your format, however you want it, I, like I said, I just went with TGA. I did try bringing in a PNG and they mentioned this in this article and I found it to be true, is that PNG files are mostly widely used for UI elements. And I tried to bring in the alpha channel seems to wreak havoc on textures. So PNG might be good for UI, but not good for textures. You might find that out when you do test it yourself, you know, if you want to do some testing. So anyway, I went with Targa compressed 24 bit. And it was, like I said, 20, 2048 by 2048. And then we can play around with scaling it and seeing, like I said, I didn't notice any problems with angles and straight lines. I just noticed some aliasing on curves. I don't know how big of that an issue that might be for you. So for me, it's not that big of an issue for the game I'm trying to create. So anyway, once we have imported our texture, we just go import here and we import to bring in our texture, just import it. And then Real Engine will let you know if there's a problem with it. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and go to create material. I can just leave it at the default name. And now if I click into this, you'll see we have our material here. And there's some things we can do now to play around with it. And you can see right here on the, the ball, it came in pretty cool, right? So there's just a few things that we need to do. Hopefully this won't take too much time. And I'll try to go as fast as possible. These controls that we're going to do will allow us to adjust the positioning and the tiling of this surface. 
such that if we wanted to, so now that I have this, actually this material, I can go ahead and just drag it onto the scene. And as you can see, it's overscaled right now. It's way too big for the plane surface. So it doesn't really help us. But if I were to jump over in here, and let's just, I'll just do this real quick to show you, is we'll right click and we'll go texture coordinates and just plug this in right here. And if I, let's say, it's one-to-one -one right now, let's see if that made a difference. We'll go apply and save. And it didn't make any difference. We still can't see the image. So let's scale it, or tile it, I should say. Three, two, three. We have to go apply and save. And now we can see that doing tiling it at the three, pretty much almost the whole image, if I hit play, let me hit play, brings in that whole image and scales it onto that one giant play pad. So like if I was gonna make a basketball court or something, I might consider this technique because it would allow me to very easily bring in some really nice lines with text on it and stuff like that. Like I said before, you'll notice some aliasing going on in the curves. How big of a deal is that? I don't know, it's not that bad. I don't think it's that bad. I can clearly see it says emergency. I can clearly see it says landing pad. Now, if I scale this down lower or brought it in at a higher resolution, it, you would notice even less aliasing than you're noticing right now. But if we look at this heart, for instance, you can see it. But you can see that's a heart, you know, and if I'm doing something in a hurry, I mean, how much is a player going to be staring at, you know, <laughs> the curves on the thing? They're going to say, oh, it says emergency. That's all I know. I'm not even paying any attention to it. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a master material, and then we'll even be able to manipulate this even more. So right now, with the controls we have, I can scale, basically scale this up or down, but I can't really control the position of it within this area. So that's what we're going to do is not only will we be able to scale this, but we'll be able to adjust its specific position, which is really what we need to be able to do. So anyway, I'm going to come back in here. And so we got that set. I can go ahead and disconnect this right now because we're not going to that up and then all these controls are some important shortcut keys you need to know but if you hit one and click you can create what's called a constant vector but we really want to create a scalar what they call scalar parameters so what we're going to do is we're going to right click and go scalar parameters and we're going to do two of these real fast well actually we're going to do four of them so i'm going to hit control d one two three what we're going to do is you hit F2, you can rename it. We're going to call this one Specular. And we're just going to plug this into Specular, and this will allow us to control. And then what other, other metallic or roughness, which other one you want to control, let's do metallic. I'll hit F2, and I'll just go metallic. Sometimes that ends up getting a real nice look to the material. We can plug that in there. And then all these values are adjustable. Okay, so that takes care of that if we want to adjust these values. And we can do one for roughness too if we want, but I'm just going to skip that for right now. So now what we're going to do is for this parameter, we're going to just hit F2 and we're going to name it U. And we're going to name this one F2. We're going to name it V. And we're just going to bring these over here like that. And then we're going to right click and look for something called append vector. This is right here. And we're just going to drag this one in here and this one in here. And then what we want to do is we want to look for a multiply node. So I'm going to drag this over here, right click and just go multiply right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag this into here and this into there. And we're not quite done yet. We just have one more thing to do. This part seems weird, but we're going to right click. We we'll use the shortcut. Press 2 and get a two vectors right here. And then what we're going to do is right click on it and convert to parameter. And we're just going to call this position. Okay. And then we have that. And this. These, once they're converted to parameters, are going to show on our control board. So we'll be able to adjust things in real time. We're going to drag off of this one here. 
And we're going to call, well, we don't even have to drag off of there, really. I just need to append these, so I'll right-click and go append vector. I click on this one over here under the name. I should have, let me go hit channel name, see this? We're just going to call this, I don't know, we can call this vertical. And we're going to call this one horizontal. Whoops. Horizontal. Okay. And then we're going to plug this one into here and this one into here. And then all we need is what's called an add node. So we'll right click again and go add. Add node. And we're going to plug this one into here. Let me double check something here real super fast. Yep. And we're going to plug this one in here to there. And then we're going to plug this into here. And you'll notice over here on our sphere, we don't see anything. And the reason that is, is that we don't have any values in here yet. So here we'll put in a 1. And here we'll put in a 1. And now we can see it again. And we'll go apply. And we'll go save. And as far as I know, that's everything that we need to do. So if you want to take a snapshot of this, it might be helpful. Now if we come over here, and let's say we click on this one, on the vertical, what do we have? We have one. We don't have anything on the vertical here yet. So let's hit one there. Okay. So if we adjust this, that's actually going horizontal. That's actually going... So I have these reversed. So let me reverse the names on those. So this should be horizontal. And this should be vertical. Sorry about that. So you can test all this out here in this level before you go any further. So if we go here, yeah, so this sends it vertically. Okay, so let's just set these back to one for right now. One and one. Okay, now I'll just go apply and save. And we're done. So now we come over here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the material and I'm going to go create a material instance. And there it is. And what I'm going to do is make sure I'm on the cube, which is the floor plane. And I'm just going to come over here and drag this into there. So now it's controlled by our material instance. And the advantage of that is if I double click into this, I have all these controls now that I can control in real time these settings so we can see how we're affecting things. And I can position myself. Whoops. Let me do that. There. So now I can just adjust these settings to my heart's content. Like let's say I wanted to scout this down how let's see this is this gonna do it three and three you see now if I were to go into the level because I retiled it I can hit save but it, it saved in real time if I go in here on the game you can see geez, <laughs> you can see that you hardly notice the aliasing now but of course the everything's smaller now so maybe we want to go back to however we had it, so I can escape out of this. But let's say I'll just send it back to one. But then let's say I want to position this thing more in the more in the center of the world, right? Maybe I don't like that. It's pretty well centered actually. But if I come over here, I can click on these controls and you see, now I can position this perfectly how I want it, just like that. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. This is just how you can scale in lines and text on a on a large floor surface and you could actually do it on any surface but i think it has a lot of specific application on the floor so anyway take care have a great day and i'll talk to you next time